I have always maintained on this platform that in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence. That in politics everything is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve specific political objectives. Nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Yesterday, IBC made a tweet on their official Twitter handle. This is what they posted. Happening now, the launch of Burning Bridges Initiative Supporters Verification Exercise at Bombers of Kenya. That tweet was intended to achieve specific political objectives. There is nothing in this country as Burning Bridges Initiative. The only thing we know we have in this country is the Building Bridges Initiative process headed by President Ru Kenyatta and Raila Amolo Odinga. It's understandable there could have been a typing error. But between building and burning, there's no way it could have been a typing error. The person who made that tweet wanted to achieve specific political objective. And indeed, they achieved those objectives. Because from the reaction of Kenyans online, those forces who are against the Building Bridges Initiative process referred to that guy as a patriot. They referred to that guy as a hero. And personally, I was not surprised at that happening. I remember in the last election, the same gentleman who runs IBC Twitter handle called Andrew Limo banned all NASA supporters, non-NASA bloggers, from commenting and even following IBC official handles. And I remember there was a meeting at one point at an um, intercontinental hotel in Nairobi, and we were invited at last minute. And during that meeting, we, we raised the question, and Rosalina Akombe was there, and they promised that they were going to rectify that. They didn't do that. So, but the question which is being asked, who is using these IBC officials to try and embarrass President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Amolodinga? But for Raila Odinga, it's okay because Raila Odinga and his team are well aware that the IBC as presently constituted cannot preside over anything called free, fair, and transparent elections. And none other than the late Homer Bay Senator Gerald Otino Kajuang captured it so well. IBC, as presently constituted, cannot preside over a free and fair election. It must be disbanded and be restructured in a dialogue of the people of Kenya. Now, Kikata, Tota Kotana, Natota Kanyagana, Wapwani Uriti Uru, Uriti Uru. So, today I want us to look at probably why IBC is keen on embarrassing President Uru Kenyatta and Raila Amolodika. But before we go into all those details, if you are watching this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Now back to the main issue. IBC made that tweet. And that tweet caused a political storm in this country yesterday. And later on, they made a clarification. This is what they said. Earlier today, the commission posted a tweet on the launch of the verification of the BBI supporters. However, there was a typographical error in the tweet which was made inadvertently. The error does not in any way reflect the position of the commission or its staff. Already, the objective had been achieved by that tweet. What IBC must tell Kenyans is whether they are, they, they are actually able to conduct a free and fair election in this country. If, for example, 
verification of their own tweets they can't do. You see, this was a verification exercise. IBC are supposed to go and verify 4 million signatures. But a single tweet, they can't verify before releasing it to the public. Because I'm sure, as part of, of a communication strategy for IBC, because these people are paid taxpayers' money, there's someone who drafts the tweet. After drafting the tweet, submits to the second person, probably for approval. And once approved, then it's when the tweet is posted. So IBC should not take Kenyans for fools. And just like Kajuang said, the IBC as presently constituted cannot preside over any free and fair elections in this country. Let, us, let me just take you through the IBC commissioners as, as per the last election. We had eight commissioners. We had Wafulas Chebukati as the chairman. Then we have Consolata Mpaka Bucha Minor as the vice chairperson of IBC. Then we had Rosalind Akombe. We had as a commissioner, we had uh, Boya Mulu as a commissioner. We had Paul Kurgat as a commissioner. We had Margaret Wanjala Mwachanya, Mwachanya as a commissioner. And then Professor Abdi Guli. Out of these eight commissioners, now you add uh, the, the, the CEO, Ezra Chiloba. Now out of all these nine people, only three are remaining. The rest resigned due to pressure. But again, you can't say they, they resigned due to pressure because the government, which they helped put in office, then rewarded them with appointments. If you bungled an election, if you made taxpayers spend billions and billions of Kenyan money, taxpayers' money, on an electronic voter KMS kit, then those electronic gadgets don't work on election day, then you don't deserve a chance. But these guys worked for IBC, they failed, the systems failed, but then the government asked them to resign and they've been rewarded by other appointments. So currently we have only three commissioners remaining. We have the Wafula Chebukati remaining, then we have Boya Mulu remaining, and Professor Abdi Guliye remaining. But why do I have a feeling that IBC is being used to embarrass Raila Molodinga and to embarrass President Uhuru Mwe Kenyatta of all the people? Let me just give you four instances first before we go into why I think they are doing this. Signature verification. The verification of signatures is supposed to be part of IBC process. When Okoa Kenya submitted their signatures to be verified by IBC, they never asked for any budget. Okoa Kenya simply submitted their signatures to IBC. I remember there were around 1.6 million signatures. They supported, I mean, they just submitted the booklets to IBC. Then later on, IBC called a press conference and announced the result of that verification. When Punguza Mziko wanted to verify, the, to verify their signatures, IBC never complained. They simply asked Punguza Mziko to submit their signature, their booklets, which they did. The next thing we had was IBC calling for a press conference to announce the outcome of that verification. And the outcome was very simple, that the, that the building the Punguza Mzigo initiative process had met the 1 million signature threshold. Now, when the Building Bridges Initiative process or team submitted their signatures to the IBC Commission, the first thing they started complaining about was a budget. They never complained for a budget on uh, Okwa Kenya, Punguza Mzigo. Now, when these guys just submitted their request, Wafula Chibukati and the two discredited commissioners started calling for a budget. And not just a budget. These guys asked Kenyans that they required 241 million Kenyan shillings for them to verify the signatures. So from that alone, something tells you that these guys were out because they, were, they wanted to incite Kenyans against the BBI. 
that for them to verify the signatures alone, they needed 241 million. That's a huge amount of money currently. But the treasury later on released to them 93 million Kenyan shillings. Now that was the first instance. The second instance is the cost of referendum. Immediately the, the Building Bridges Initiative team submitted the signatures for verification. IBC started complaining about the cost of the referendum. They pegged the cost at 14 billion Kenyan shillings. Relo Dinga insisted that the cost of the referendum cannot go beyond 2, million, 2 billion Kenyan shillings. So IBC is pushing for 14 billion as the cost. Railo Dinga, who is one of the proponents of the Building Bridges Initiative process, is saying that they only need 2 billion. The main reason why IBC was insisting on 14 billion was simple. They wanted to set up the BBI against the public. Because let's face it, when Punguza Mzigo met the 1 billion threshold after submitting their signatures and IBC verified, IBC never raised the issue of cost. They never did that. They never raised the issue of cost. When Punguza Mzigo met the threshold. Again, the Punguza Mzigo team escalated this process to the county. To the county assemblies. By the time they, they were su submitting this bill to the county assemblies, the IBC never raised the issue of cost. But for the, the Building Bridges Initiative team, they have not even escalated the process to the county assemblies. But IBC is already talking of cost. And the moment they talked of the 14 billion cost, Tim Tanga Tanga started using that 14 billion to incite Kenyans about against the Building Bridges Initiative. So basically that's what the IBC team wanted. Because we are in a, a situation where businesses have collapsed, we are, we are in the middle of a pandemic and everything was actually shut due to COVID. Then you are telling them that the cost of running that referendum would be 14 billion. You are not even telling them that you are going to import the vaccine into the country. You are only telling them about 14 billion for referendum. So it was meant to incite Kenyans. So that was the second instance I realized that these guys were out to embarrass President Uru Kenyatta and Raila Molodinga. Number three now is the Burning Bridges Initiative tweet. That tweet, and I've explained it clearly, was intended to achieve a political objective. And because I've explained it ex extensively, I'm not going to go over it again. But that tweet, don't be cheated, that the tweet was a mistake. There was no typing mistake in that tweet. That tweet was, is, was intended to achieve the objective. It was designed to achieve that objective. Because let's face it, if IBC is intending to verify 4 million signatures, but the same team cannot verify, verify their own tweet. Because I want to assume that in IBC, they have a communication strategy. That anything which is being posted on their tweet, Twitter handles and Facebook must be approved. So someone drafts the tweet, submit to the next level, who approves, and then finally the guy who makes the post. So there was no way this, this verification process would have gone wrong in the eyes of all these people. And assuming it went wrong, the moment this tweet was posted, they didn't remove it immediately. They had to wait for Kenyans to consume it well. Then that's when they deleted it. So again, they are embarrassing the president by terming something he had worked for because the Building Bridges Initiative process is one of the legacy projects the president has identified. Now you are calling it the Burning Bridges Initiative. And on number four, this fourth instance, is the multi-choice referendum. IBC is not talking about coming up with a multi-choice referendum. And none other than Robert Alai, one of the highly credited, highly respected, bloggers in this country revealed that IBC are planning to come up with a multi-choice referendum. The Building Bridges Initiative team is not calling for a multi-choice referendum. 
For them, they are saying, we want a yes and no question. The reason IBC is coming up with a multi-choice referendum is because they want several questions so that they have several sheets to justify the cost. Because Kenyans are questioning how a mere sheet of paper with a yes or no answer can cost taxpayers 14 billion. Again, the proponents are saying for us we just want a yes or no. But IBC in their own wisdom or lack of it because I think it's lack of wisdom are telling the, the, the proponent that you guys, you, you, I'm not going to give you a single question. I want it to be a multi-choice. How do you do that? If the proponent, proponents of the BBI wanted a multi-choice referendum, then they should have told IBC exactly that. That's what they should have. Even their question should have been drafted in that manner. But why are they pushing for multi-choice? They want to give that credit to William Samuel Ruto because Ruto has been pushing for a multi-choice referendum. So because of those four instances, these guys are out clearly to embarrass President Ruto Kenyatta and to embarrass Raila Molodinga. But why are they out to embarrass President Ruto Kenyatta and why are they out to embarrass Raila Molodinga? Four reasons again. Number one, in my view, why these guys are keen to embarrass specifically Raila Molodinga is because of the IBC must go campaign. During the last election, Raila Odinga and team believed that the IBC were not going to offer or to provide or to conduct any free, fair and credible elections. Their intelligence told them clearly that Wafula Chibukati and the team of commissioners were compromised. And that Ezra Chiloba was actually a, a project and the puppet of one man, William Samairuto. And that's why, if you looked at uh, even, um, even the staffs who are working at IBC, clearly they were not for Raila Molodinga. So Raila Molodinga embarked on a IBC must go campaign. They were commonly referred to as Tiagas Mondays. So every single Monday, they would go and camp at IBC offices to force the commissioners to resign. But because these guys were being protected by the system, they refused to resign. Ultimately, elections were conducted, but the image of the commissioners were tainted. So that today they are trying to, to, to revamp those tainted images, but their images were tainted. Because of that, there's a grudge between the commissioners and Raila Molodinga. And because Raila Odinga is the one pushing for the BBI, they must frustrate him. And by frustrating him, they are also frustrating President Uhuru Mugekinyat. I want you to listen to watch this short clip of massive demonstrations outside IBC offices. The second reason why they are undermining President Uru Kenyatta and Raila Monodinga, in my view, is because of the BBI proposal on the IBC. BBI is proposing, making radical proposals on IBC commissioners and their staffs, that all these people are going to be subjected, Wafula Chebukati and the three commissioners remaining, senior staffs at IBC, are going to be subjected to fresh vetting. They don't want this to happen. Because if vetting was to be conducted, someone is going to kick out of Lachi Bukati. Someone is going to kick out Professor Abdi Gulia. Someone is going to kick out Boya Mulu. These three people don't want to leave office. So by, by, by supporting the Building Bridges Initiative process under the referendum, it means when it goes through, they are going to go home. So the best thing for them is to undermine the process so that it doesn't proceed. And by undermining the process, they are basically undermining President Ruki Nyata and Raila Molodinga. 
Number four is the Tanga Tanga sympathizers within IBC. I strongly believe that the guy who is running, <coughs> who is running the, the IBC Twitter, Andrew Limo, because this is an, a first-hand experience I had with them, is a William Ruto sympathizer. In the last elections, this guy, Andrew Limo, who is the communications guy at IBC, was actually receiving instructions from Denis Situmbe. I'll need someone to challenge me on that. Because in the last election, we had two camps. We, have, we had the NASA and we had the Jubilee. There was no way that Andrew Limo could have just decided to block all non-NASA bloggers, for that matter, from their official pages. But then leave all Jubilee bloggers on their page. IBC is a commission paid by taxpayers' money. So if you block all NASA supporters by that time, personally, they also blocked me. And I remember there was a meeting which was organized and we were invited last minute. They didn't realize that the names they were sending included some of us. That meeting, we raised these issues. Why the, the pages blocked all NASA supporters who are critical of IBC. And they promised that they were going to unblock those people. Up to today, up to today, if you go to IBC official Twitter handle and you check block list, you'll find over 5,000 names of NASA supporters blocked. So basically, there are people who are at IBC but are sympathetic because Raleigh Dinga recently said that everybody has a political side. Even the Pope, if you give him an opportunity, he will choose a side. And you can't say that. But there are certain sympathizers at IBC, who are sympathetic to William Ruto. These are the guys who are making this kind of tweets. And lastly, is William Ruto's influence on IBC. President Ruto Kenyatta and Jubilee government are well aware that IBC is highly discredited. They are well aware that the recruitment of senior staffs at IBC were influenced in favor of them. And because William Ruto was the main guy in Jubilee Party during the last election, the truth of the matter is that William Ruto still has a lot of influence in IBC. It is claimed within the political circles, and this is the truth, that Wafula Chebukati was actually a project or a puppet of the deputy president. He was re reporting directly to William Samuel Ruto. And that's why some comm commissioners then decided to resign at some point, because they were like, Commissioners cannot arrive at any conclusion during meetings before a few of them would go outside there, consult, and come back. So those are the reasons why these guys are embarrassing President Ru Kenyatta and are also embarrassing Raila Amulodinga. But do you think IBC, as presently constituted, can preside over a free and fair referendum? My answer is no, but let me hear your answer. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day.